Hey, what's up? This is BQ. If you are a loyal subscriber, thank you for swinging by as you do each and every time I upload a video. If it's your first time coming to the Impact Lounge, we're talking lots of Impact Wrestling um, in the most positive way possible. So if it's your first time here, I would love to have you as a subscriber as well. And if you're looking for a good review of Impact Wrestling each week, my co-host Adam and Roe review the show weekly. And if you just click the description here, I'm going to put the link to the playlist and you can uh, just access it. And uh, whenever you're listening to this, you can listen to the latest review of Impact. So today what I want to talk about is Impact stars who are forced to turn babyface. And that's going to be in uh, in the last couple of years. So basically people we're seeing on TV, but people we've seen um, over the last couple of years who were just kind of forced who um, to get that turn. Like they came in as a heel and over time they just became a baby face and they've been pretty damn successful at it. So first one I want to talk about, you see her pictured right there, Rosemary. Rosemary came in with Decay a couple of years ago and it's crazy if you look back at the old impact stuff and you look at the uh, the original rosemary very you know very har- very uh harley quinnish but very dark and especially if you look at rosemary's debut that face paint <laughs> compared to how she looks now is two totally different people and i remember josh matthews being like what is that that thing and she cut a really really good promo and um You know, I never knew she was coming at the time, and at first I actually thought uh, Crazy Steve was in makeup, and uh, he was talking, but there was a different voice going over the mic. I really actually didn't realize it was uh, Courtney Rush, so really cool, and um, Decay was such a great team, such a great faction, and when they were, when they had their title run as the champions, it was a, it was a really good run. The problem was the tag team division got gutted at that time. We lost beer money uh, due to Bobby Roode leaving. We lost EY and Bram due to EY leaving. Uh, The Wolves with Davey Richards getting hurt. So all the really cool contenders that Decay could have had, um, I think that's a lot of the reason we didn't get the run out of Decay that we really wanted. And then when they had to face the Hardys, you know, the Hardys were kind of career killers with the broken gimmick. But Rosemary remained as the star. And at first she was an attraction and she was cool and she hardly ever ever wrestled. And then as time passed, people really, really wanted to see Rosemary. And it really, really, truly got to the point that she didn't need Decay anymore. And Decay without her wasn't as good, wasn't gonna be as good. But you know, Crazy Steve was also leaving. Got to the point they didn't need her. And she had the baby face turn to where she uh misted Sienna when she looked like she was going to attack Allie and it really kind of came out of nowhere because it was coming it was getting to that point where people were just cheering for Rosemary way too much and really wanted to see her and she was such a cool character that they had no choice but to turn her baby face as a heel she was very very dominant she has not been dominant as a baby face so let's hope in 2018 we see a better version of Rosemary get another knockouts title win and all that good stuff. Next one on the list, another knockout, Ali. Ali is the current knockouts champion on television. And the really crazy thing, if you remember Ali's debut, Ali came as part of the lady squad for Maria Canellis. Also with Laurel Van Ness and Sienna. It's crazy to think back at a couple years ago, Slammiversary, when Sienna won the title and had Ali in the corner and and um this even the early days of Allie, like she was a heel and she was an annoying heel. That was the crazy part. She used to scream at the top of her lungs, like real, real shrieking. And I mean, it was the point people didn't want to see her on TV because of the shrieking was so annoying. And I think uh, it was obvious. It was really obvious when she was first on TV, like that role was really out of her character and she was really struggling to find her way within it. But then the storyline, even though it was the slowest build in Impact history, I swear, the storyline so organically began to grow. And as Maria became a real strong heel for a while, um, she got really overexposed after a while and kind of kind of lost her steam. But there, were, there was a point where she was a strong heel. And that's what created the really, really strong babyface with Allie. And Allie has been the most organic 
growth into a baby face and into a star in, in the company. And some could argue maybe that's Rosemary, but the crowd started really getting behind Allie. They were cheering for Allie. And I remember when Maria was going to face Gail Kim at Slammiversary and and uh, she asked the crowd something along the lines of, uh, you don't, you don't want to see me out here? Who do you want to see? And the crowd just starts going, Ali, Ali. <laughs> and she uh, was expecting a Gail Kim chant. She's like, oh, it's not Ali. It's Ga- you, Gail. But the crowd was so behind Ali, and uh, you know she she picked up her um, picked up the pieces on that angle pretty quickly. But it really really organic. The cherry bomb character, as I've said many times, I don't think w- would have really gotten over on Impact Television. And people are gonna argue that with me all day. I don't think so. I really like the way that they started it. Wish it was a little bit quicker. And now she's kind of you know one of the two top faces of, of the knockouts division. I think she got the the title a little quick. I don't think it was her intention. I think they want the, or their, their intention. I think they wanted Laurel Van Ness to have a, uh, a long run as champion, but she was really the only person who could take the title off LVN because Rosemary was in the angle with Taya. So yes, Ali is number two. Number three, um, Falaba. Now Falaba is not a, a staple on impact television by any means. He came in with Mario Bocara as the, uh, monster factory tag team champions from the, uh, indie company in New Jersey. I believe it's in New Jersey. And th- those guys came in and they were just job and left and right. And followed by, you look at him like, okay, this guy could kind of be a modern day Yokozuna. He's a big dude. His first match, he was taken off his feet like three or four times. There's always the angle where, you know, they drop kick him and he like falls through the second rope. But there was many times that I don't even remember who they debuted against. Might have been Veterans of War. But he was taken off his feet several times. And I remember saying like they have completely killed any opportunity for Falaba to be a credible threat to anybody on Impact Wrestling. I didn't. I actually really thought he wasn't going to make it once they once they let go of Jeff Jarrett. I assume Jeff Jarrett kind of brought him aboard. I'm not. I'm not positive on that one. But that was a, a heel tag team that they you know they could have done something with if they tried. Mario Bokoba gets injured. I don't even know where the turn happened with Falaba. I don't even think it was due to crowd reaction. I think it was due out of necessity because as a as a heel. Who couldn't talk he was difficult to book by himself that's kind of how I looked at it so randomly he has this grand title match with EC3 EC3 of all people was not the guy that Falaba should have started uh gaining momentum again against but he did and EC3 even had to cheat and use heel tactics to beat him that match so it was really some ass backwards stuff but he there, he from there kind of worked into the grand championship title scene and had a really, really excellent three way match with EC3 and Matt Seidel. And you know, obviously, he doesn't have a, a speaking role or anything like that. He just hits him his head and bah, bah, and the crowd really gets behind that. So, as I'm speaking to you today, he has a match tonight on Impact against Sammy Callahan. So, that should be interesting. He had a match with Alberto El Patron on Brace for Impact. So, it seems like they're going to kind of give this dude a little bit of a run. And again, I think the babyface turn kind of happened out of necessity. I think there was no rhyme or reason for it. They just kind of had to do it. And it's actually worked. And he's he's over and kind of a credible threat. I mean, he, he doesn't win, but you don't really ne- expect him to job necessarily. So four and five is uh, most of y'all's favorite tag team, LAX, Latin American Exchange. We remember the episode where they, and I think that was a pretty higher rated episode, uh, if I remember properly, but um, LAX debuted with Homicide, Conan, Diamante, and it's funny, I did an interview with an indie promotion promoter several years ago on the channel. It wasn't on the channel, but I did it on Podbean and iTunes and everything, and he was hyping up a match of Kingston and Jade versus you know, who we now know as LAX. They had a, they have a different indie name and I, to the, for the life of me, cannot remember it. Cause it's, I always have to look at it and read it. It's not something I can remember. It's like initials, 
but they came in as a heel force, but they were still over, you know, like everyone was still like, man, LAX is really, really badass because they were just doing these great moves. And it was, and people like strong factions where everyone's kind of seen as an equal, where I think factions really fails when you have, you know, several jobbers in one star, like that's not fun to me. But when you have, you know, a real legitimate force, I think that's, that's uh, the way you book a faction. And LAX just continued to impress in the ring, bust their asses. They wanted to be in Impact Wrestling. They want to be in Impact Wrestling. And the crowd just started loving them and started cheering them. And they cheer them louder than anybody. You know, them and Rosemary are the ones who are really freaking over. And they had to turn them. And they did the double turn at Bound for Glory 2017 with OVE. And we'll talk about heels in another video. Now, OVE was not over and they were really trying to push these guys as baby faces. So it really worked for the, for the best, you know, OVE needed a heel turn. LAX got the baby face turn and now they're like, can really let loose in the ring and get, you know, really work with the crowd. And I think the really impressive thing with LAX is that they haven't really changed their demeanor. So they're baby faces, but they're, they're working like Conan's working as a tweener they're kind of working as tweeners to an extent, but they keep, they kept the gimmick. Whereas like Rosemary's gimmick was really dark. And now it's, you know, there's even aspects of comedy at times. Now LAX has really stayed true to the course and, uh, they're badasses. What else can I say? Last one I want to talk about number six is Moose. So Moose came in, he debuted at destination X couple years back, and this is back when Destination X had damn near nothing to do with the X Division, but the main event was, um, damn, I, I don't remember. It was a world title match, and I know Mike Bennett got involved, and he said he was going to ruin the evening. I know Eddie Edwards was involved. I, I think it was Eddie Edwards versus Lashley. Um, we speculated Moose was coming, and uh, at the time, Mike Bennett was pretty happy with Impact Wrestling, and I think he was fairly happy through most of his time there, uh, in, in all honesty, he just received an offer to move on, but he brought Moose over and Moose immediately was a heel. He came, you know, attacking Lashley, attacking Eddie Edwards, and they were turning Moose babyface within four or five episodes. I mean, as soon as that set of tapings was over, because that was a live show, as soon as that set of tapings was over, they already were transitioning him into a babyface role. You know, the crowd does the the moose arm chant. That is not a heel thing. And I know he was a heel in Ring of Honor, if I remember correctly. But it's not really a heel thing. And he just started kind of getting over it. And I think the whole idea was to have him as, you know, the bodyguard of the henchman of Mike Bennett. And I think Mike Bennett was probably booked to get a really strong world title run. But it just didn't work. People started liking Moose a lot better than Mike Bennett very quickly. And they began, began feuding. And Moose continued to get the upper hand in that feud. And he's still with the company now. And they're running with the dude. So I'm glad that they never gave Mike Bennett, that real, Mike Bennett that really strong push that I thought was coming. Because, you know, he, he played out his contract. Even stayed um, a little bit extra. And then he was gone. Boom. Just like that. And I thought he was really primed to get a big run, but instead they ran with Moose early on and haven't really looked back. I think Moose is going to get a strong world title run within the next, I'm not going to say this year, but within the next year. And, and maybe not a strong run, but I, I see him getting a world title run and they just had to, had to make him a baby face. He, he was really cool as a heel for a little while. I felt like, man, what if they put a little stable together of him, Marche, and Lashley? You know, I thought that would have been really cool. You know, all kind of the same size. And his his debut was really, um, really impactful. But it didn't last. Heel Moose didn't last. So next video is going to be Impact Stars who were forced to turn heel. And again, this is going to be, you know, within the last year or so. I'm not going to go back too deep. But um, forced to turn heel. Hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you're a first timer, please hit the subscribe button and uh, would love for you to keep swinging by the Impact Lounge. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.